Welcome to Christ Revival Evangelistic Ministries, also known as Sanctuary Praise Church. Here is a message that will establish the truth of God in your life by Evangelist Victor Ajishefe. When you are not in control of your mind, you are not in control. You are not in control of your life. That's why you get angry when Satan wants you to be angry. That's why you go and commit immorality when Satan wants you to do it. That's why people steal. There is nobody that steals that the thing doesn't, it doesn't show up first in your mind. That is the reason you map out strategies. Yeah. When God wants to speak to you, he speaks to your mind. Your mind carries your spiritual senses. My body carries my physical senses. That is why this body is useless as soon as my five senses shut down. The usefulness of this body is where my eyes can see, my ears can hear. The usefulness of this body is my five senses. Your spirit the senses of your spirit functions in your mind. That is why it is in your mind you see things that somebody sitting next to you cannot see. You are the only one that knows what you are seeing. It is in your mind that you speak and nobody outside hears you and you are hearing, you are even communicating. Yeah. Yeah. can be talking to God and you are 1,000 miles away from God. That's why he himself said, these people are worshipping me with their mouth, but their heart which is the mind. The place where I want to be the place the, I'm a spirit. The place where you belong to me, I belong to you, is in your mind. God does not dwell in physical temple. He dwells in spiritual temple. In the mind. When you speak, it is my ears that hears you. It is not my body that hears you. I hear you with my ears. If I close my ears, if you are speaking, I will not hear you. The senses of your spirit man functions in the mind. As my physical senses functions in my body. So when God speaks, it is in your mind you will hear him. The place where you hear the voice when spirit is talking is in your mind, not in this ear. That's what you could be playing music in this place and I am not disturbed by the music once I do not connect my mind to it. The quality of your mind is the quality of your life. Whether you are spiritual or not, doesn't have much to do with how you look like on the outside. It has much to do with who you are on the inside. Prosperity or poverty is a product of the mind. Sin or holiness is a product of the mind. Success or failure is a product of the mind. That's why Psalm 1 says, if you meditate in the word of God day and night, you delight yourself. Where do you delight in something? It's in your mind. This thing, I like this thing, I like him. I like him. It is the picture that you have in your mind. Anything that your mind retains holds you. If your mind hates it, no matter how they try to show you love on the outside, you will not respond. When your mind loves it, no matter how they try to reject you on the outside, you pursue it. My brothers and sisters, my friends, 
Choose not to allow the devil to have you this year. I'm begging you. Do you know why a lot of people's prayer lives are not effective? Your mind does not pray. Your mind play. Your mind curse. Your mind is polluted. Your mind is choked with everything negative. You're only praying with your head because you're trying to act religious. God will never answer your prayers. I am begging you. Do you want the quality of your life to improve this year? I know all of us will say yes. Do you know what? Pay attention to what your mind meditates on. Begin to develop the begin for, to develop the capacity to say no to a lot of things that comes to your mind. Yeah. When your mind wants to get angry, be quick to recognize that this is not of God. Even if I'm annoyed, if I get angry, scripture tells me that the sun should not go down on my anger. It said, be angry but sin not. So the moment I'm angry, I am angry. Something has happened and I'm angry. Immediately, I turn my attention to the word of God and I say, look, it will, it will be okay that you are angry, but be angry and say not. What is the meaning of that? When you are angry, don't you receive an idea from the devil. There are two ideas that could... You have two sources of information. Two sources of idea. You have two powers that are fighting for control of your life. When you are angry, why, why would God say, be angry but sin not? In other words, as a human being, somebody can step on your knife, nerves, and you feel very uncomfortable, you feel angry. You better don't take suggestion from the devil when you are angry. There was somebody that said something to me many years ago. He said, anytime you are angry, don't take pain to write. If you are going to write, allow yourself to cool down before you write. If you put some pen on paper when you are angry, you will write things that you will regret later. You will have wished that you didn't write it. And when somebody has gone into black and white, you may not be able to get it back. Say so never when you are upset, don't put pen on paper. Ninety-five percent chances you will do the wrong thing. But when you are angry, allow the spirit of God. That's the meaning. Be angry but say not. Allow the spirit of God to come in. How will that happen? When you are angry, remind yourself that the Bible said the sun must not go down on your anger. Remind yourself that he said you should forgive those who trespass against you. Alright? You can go in that direction, in anger. You can also go in the direction of revenge. This is left hand game. I go poison her, I go kill her. That's how people murder people. People commit murder. What do you think happens to them? They meditate on hurt, offense. They take time. It takes time because people commit murder. They will have killed the person spiritually a long time before they carry it out physically. If you will receive this instruction and vow to make it part of your life, You will see changes. But if you leave your mind the way it functions, uncared for, if you don't feed it with the word of God, if you don't be in charge, you are praying for nothing. Because after you are finished praying, Satan will go there and take the blessing from you. 
That's the way it is. That's the way it is. That's why scripture says we should meditate in the word of God day and night. Do you know why God said be meditating in the word of God day and night? You will be conversant with the information that you will need to enrich your soul. The place where your mind lives is called the soul. The soul. The soul accommodate, shelters, your soul shelters, your mind. In your mind, you have the power of choice. That's your willpower. The place where you say yes or no. That is why nobody will blame the devil for anything that happens to you at the end of the day. When sinners go to hell, they will not blame anybody. Do you know why? Because you have a will. You have ability and the capacity to say no. Your will. Meditation takes place in your mind. Imagination is in your mind. It's in your mind that you see things, you're, you're watching a movie you are seeing pictures of what others cannot see, but you they see, and it's very real to you. That's why the spiritual, the spiritual is much more real to you. Do you know why many of us, Satan hates it when you get educated spiritually? Because now they get advantage over you. Is somebody following me? Like what I'm teaching you right now, the devil doesn't like it. The power that he has over, the advantage he has over you is what I'm exposing to you right now. That's how he controls you. That's where he possesses you. And the devil will rather concentrate on your mind because he knows that what holds your mind holds your life. He knows that the garden of your life is your mind. The seed that is planted there becomes your harvest on the outside. Yeah. That is why I would rather dwell on the word of God than dwell on human philosophy. The word of God is the highest quality of seed that you can plant in your mind. There are different seeds that the mind receives. The mind is a field. It's a garden. There are different seeds. Human advice is seed. Demonic advice is seed. Science is a kind of knowledge, a kind of information. Right? Scientific, scientific um, principles are developed by the, when the five senses observes the environment, the observation of the five senses in the environment. That's what produces science. That is why if science cannot see it, cannot touch it, cannot feel it, cannot taste it, they don't believe it. They say it is not scientifically proven. It's also a seed. The seed of science is a higher quality to the seed of someone that have no knowledge. Alright? You don't have, you don't understand your environment. That's the reason our environment is like this in Africa. When you go to a white man's country, you will see people that understand the environment. A white man knows that plantation plantation and human beings are to co-inhabit. They understand. They have knowledge about the environment. 
they know that the ideal way God made man, man must live in the midst of plantation. Needless to say that when God created man in Genesis, he put him inside a garden. There is a reason why God put man inside a garden. One of the reasons that I know very well is the fact that the oxygen you breathe in to refresh your lungs, to circulate food around your body, that is what plants breathe out. The waste product of a plant is your own product for survival. The waste product of man, which is carbon dioxide, is what plants use to survive. That's what they use to manufacture their food. What plants breathe out is what I breathe in. What I breathe out is what plants breathe in. So a white man is sensible enough to know that when a man stands this way, a tree should stand this way. When a man build his house this way, he should have trees around his house if he wants to live healthy. Therefore, every neighborhood of a white man is full of trees. Their streets are full of trees. Their mountains are full of trees. What do they do? They, they take planting of tree is a major project. In fact, it is a crime for you to cut a tree in a one man's country. When you have a tree somewhere that you don't want it there, you have a department of government you will call. There we come. They look at the tree. If it is the type that their machine can uproot, they will uproot it. They will go and plant it somewhere. If it is an old tree, if they have to cut it, they will make sure they plant two trees to replace that one. Why? They have very deep knowledge for you to live healthy as a human being. When you, live, when you stand this way, a tree stands this way. When you are walking on the street, you have tree left and right all around you. You were meant to co-inhabit. What they breathe out is what you are breathing in. What you are breathing out is what they breathe in. That is why they live heavy than us here. It is the same thing that is happening to us spiritually. Sir, If I don't dedicate my life to things that will make me spiritually healthy, I'll be spiritually poor and then it will show in my life. When you look at someone who bases his life, who is always planting the seed of the word of God in his mind, that he doesn't allow gossip in his mind, doesn't allow bitterness in his mind, he doesn't allow hurts in his mind, it doesn't, it doesn't keep offense. You might be offended. As human beings, we must wrong each other. But you are the type, type of person that where you are wrong and you say it, that's the end of it. When you get home, maybe you get home and you're sitting at the dining table and the devil wants to bring that offense. Say, I see how that person they treat you. Say, no, that's all right. I'm done with that. Somebody wants to live a healthy spiritual life. You say, I'm done with that. Jesus has forgiven me so much. I don't have any problem forgiving people who has offended me. What a freedom you have given to yourself. What's going to happen? You will be rich in the mind. Spiritually, you will be healthy. Why, why does Satan want you to keep offense? So that you become toxic in the spirit. You become a polluted fountain. Nothing good. Tell me something good that you have gained from keeping offense. All your life. Keeping offense have separated you from people who are supposed to be part of your life. Keeping offense has made people that God had wanted to use to help you to avoid you. Plant good seeds this year in the mind. 
Thanks for listening and I believe you've been transformed remarkably. For more information, you can call on these numbers 078-593-977 or 078-595-977 or visit us at the Sanctuary Place Church, South Drive of King Hammond Road, Brookfields, Freetown, Sierra Leone. Thank you and God bless you.